Okay. Um, chapter 21, not uh, told in. Page 142. Uh, so the Mishnah started with saying that a person <coughs> on Shabbat can lift their child in their arms. The prerequisite is that the child should be able to stand on their own two feet. Um, so it's not a baby that you're actually intending to drag with you um, or take with you, but a child that is already independent enough. And it says, the Mishnah says that a person can take his son when there is a stone in his son's hand. And I just want to go over, Peter and I finished off yesterday saying, uh, my area event, which is the top of 142, right? What's the point in teaching that he's allowed to hold a stone? I feel a dinar nami. Even you can, he could even be holding a dinar, a coin, in his hand as well. Alamah ma rava. So why did Rava say lo shanoya laevin? They taught uh, that the family committed with holding a stone. Aval dinar is asur, but the dinar is forbidden. So why? Even in a fala lo ate abu hala ayetsuye. So if the stone falls from his hand, his father won't bother to bend down and pick up a stone. Dinar, uh, dinar, however, in a fila te abu hala tsuye. If if the dinar should fall, the father may very well bend down and pick up the dinar. This would be in a public domain on Shabbos. And that's why the dinar is a no-no. Tanya Kavate de Rava. Bryce was talking to the Rava. Hamotik kelav me kupalim munachim al kepo. One who carries that is close folded and resting on his shoulder. The sandla vitabotav viado and sandals and rings in his hand. Kaya. In his hand. Not, not on his ring. Holding oh, these rings, yeah, those rings, like holding okay. in his hand. Yeah, okay. uh, Chayav, his rival. The Im Hayam Melubash and if he was coiting them, Patur. Hamoti Adam Vekela Vala, one who carries out a person who's wearing his clothes, so one who carries out a person who's wearing his clothes. The son of Veraglav is Chabot Sabia, so with his sandals on his feet and his rings on his hand, Patur. The Ilu. But if he had carried the clothes out as they are, meaning folded on his shoulder and actually holding onto his sandals and rings, pay up. He would be liable. Peter, why was that? Why was that? Uh, why liable on the count of the clothes? And if you're wearing, if you're wearing clothes, you're not liable. Oh, this was just, um, we repeated it, it was repeated. Yes. There may be some stuff on you and I. That seems to be there some stuff. So the first one was carrying sandals and rings in his hand libel. Okay, that makes sense. If he was clothed in the clothes, touch off. If he was wearing his clothes, Sandals on his feet and rings in his hands is exempt. Which is the same as the one we just read about if he was clothed in them. Like a carrying out a person garments on. Yeah. You know, you you a person being carried, a person who's wearing a person who's wearing all of his clothes being carried. Being carried. And that that's exempt. So if you carry a person who's wearing 
Yes, boy. So the second one was wearing... Right. Same, same as if you're carrying a child. You're permitted to carry a child because the child is going to stand on a child. Oh, so if, you, if you're holding a person, like the child, or an invalid, anyone, and, um, and that person is holding their clothes, then you're failed. So whether you're you're holding your clothes or whether the person you're carrying is holding their clothes, both cases are liable. Okay. Kal Evan So the Mishnah said, um, if the person has a basket in their hand and there's a stone in the basket. So remember, if they're carrying the stone, they're still patur. With a basket with a stone in it, they are. Right, right, right. Yep. It says even a ba or a basket when there is a stone in it. Okay, so that's exempt. Bamai. So why would you be allowed to carry the basket? To have a The basket should be a base to the forbidden object. So it should be mukta. Ama rabba bar bar chana ma radiyofna. Here we're dealing with a basket that's filled with produce, but it has a stone as well. So here the basket is carrying permitted items, which is the basis for allowing it. The lishdin hu lefere vinishte leevem, but let him fill the produce and the stone. Uh, and collect the produce by hand, returning to the basket. So, tip it out and then put the fruit back in, and there's no stone. So, why would it's saying why wouldn't that be allowed? So this is produce that becomes soiled, uh, easily ruined. Here too, we're dealing with produce that becomes soiled, and it would be ruined if you dumped it on the ground. So you can't spill it out, it's not an option. So let him shake the basket and its contents until the stone comes out. Leaving only the produce. Amar Rav Chia Barashi Amar Rava. Hacha bechakla bechuta atinan. Here we're dealing with a punctured basket. The even gufa na aset dofen lechakla, in which the stone itself became a part of the basket wall. Uh, so the stone was stopping the produce from. Uh -huh. In which case, there's no mukta. Uh, stopping the produce from falling out of the basket. Not only is there no mukta, but you're three pounds of mukta. Because it's joined to the basket. The what? It said not only is there no mukta, but removing the stone would be lost. Right. Right. Metal to lean truma So we can remove truma uh, that is tame together with that which is tahor or together with kulin. So, what was that? Okay. Amar al loshan o ela she tafor la mata o tmei la mala. They taught only where the tafor, that is the truma, is on the bottom of the basket, and the tame, uh, the tame truma is on top of the ba is on top of it, towards the top of the fruit. Uh, for the food, Aval Tahor Lamala Utmeh Lamata, 
But if the tahor is on top and the tamay is on the bottom, shakile le tahora, the shavikle le tmea. One must take the tahor truma out and leave the tamay truma behind. Go ahead, Peter. Go ahead. We learn in the Mishnah that one may move ritually impure summa with ritually pure summa. Now, this is the only truth is in the case that pure summa is on the bottom and the usual summa is on the top. In that case, if one wants to reach the pure summa, there is no alternative to taking the empty pure summa as well. Say that again, Terry. If you want to reach the pure, you have to take the impure Right. Yes. Which is mukta. The tame, the impure trauma is mukta. However, However, if the pure trauma is on top, yes. the impure trauma is on the bottom, yes. he takes the pure trauma and leaves the impure trauma. Right. The chit la masa nami, but if even if the Tahor Trauma is on the bottom, to let him spill out all the Trauma and then collect the Tahor Trauma and return it to the Barter. In other words, you don't, you'll be removing, we don't need to worry about the Tame Trauma anymore. Amar Rabbi Eli, Amar Rav, so Perot Hamitantin Hakinan, we're dealing with produce that becomes easily soiled. Meitive, they challenge this based on the Baraita. The Talpin Truma Tamea into Hatahorava in Hakulin. We may move Truma that is Tame together with that which is Tahor or together with Kulin. Then Shetahora Lamala or Tamea Lamata, where the Tahor is uh, on top uh, and the Tamea is on the bottom. Then Shetamea Lamala or Tahor Lamata. Yupta, the Rav Tista. This is the reputation of Rav Tista's ruling. Amar Lach Rav Tista. Matzik and Lesorach before a Mishnah is dealing with you're moving the Tal Truma for the sake of its use, meaning you're going to be eating it. Baraita Lesorach Mekomo. The Baraita is actually talking about where you need to move it for the sake of its place. Ah, so the sake of its use is permitted and for the sake of its place is not permitted. Is not permitted. You follow? The general rule of Mukta is if you can use it on Shabbos, then you can move it. But if you're only needing to move it because I need to get something out of the Mukta. That's what it's saying, isn't it? Um, in this case, he may move it even if it contains impure trauma exclusively. That is what is being said here. The is referring to a case where he needs the basket for the purpose of yes. utilizing the right place. That is, he wants to move the basket in order to vacate the place. In which case you may move it even if it contains impure summa exclusively. Right. And remember we uh, we learnt several weeks back yeah. that you could move things. When you were talking about thinking, you could move things in order to take that place. Uh, yeah. to use that place. The rest of the Ah, what's 13, Michael? Yeah, it is ordin ordinarily forbidden to move an inherently muksa object for the sake of its place. Only a forbidden use utensil, which is subject to lesser restrictions, qualifies for this dispensation. However, when the muksa object is in a basket together with a non muksa object that is more valuable, one is allowed to move the entire basket for the sake of its place. Okay, so, it the so the fact that it's a mixture means you can move it. Only that basis. Rabbi Barber has an equally important question. Um.
It's my kinder. Sorry. My juch, my juchake de Rav Pista lu le okme mat mitin le tzarech gufo. So why did Rav Pista bother to interpret our Mishnah uh, from the point of view of the sake of its use? Amarava, Matnitin Kavate Daika, a missionary is more precisely when read uh, according to Rav Sista, the Katani Seka, because it teaches in its later latter clause, Ma'ot Sha'al Hakar, money that's on a pillow, Mina'er et Hakar Vehen Nobelet, you can shake the pillow so that it falls off. Bama Rabba Baba Hana, Ma Rabbi Yochanan, Loshanu Ela Lutzerah before they taught uh, this only where it's needed for the sake of its use, meaning where you need the pillow. Aval Lutzerah Mechomo, but if it's just for the sake of its place, um, for the sake of its place, how would you have a sake? Why would you want to need a pillow? Uh, if you needed to sit down where the pillow was. Metal Pillow the Odana Love. It says here, you can move it while the money is on it. Mm. So you can, you can pick it up. Just still on. Mm. Or just for and since the letter clause uh, is for the sake of its use, Reisha Nami Lutzerah Kofor, it's reason to say the first clause, similarly, is where you need to read the child trauma, is for the sake of its use. Rav Sista therefore stated that the permit to move the basket with the tummy trauma inside it is limited to a situation where the tapo trauma is on bottom and cannot be retrieved separately. Which is exactly like Rav Sista, where you can pick up the pillow because what you don't need is on the top, I think. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Mishnah, or back in the Mishnah, Rabbi Yehuda Omer Achma Lin Vechule. So we can also remove, we can remove one part of Truma from a mixture with 100 parts of Chulin. So Chulin is unconsecrated food. Unconsecrated. Unconsecrated. Kodjim is the food that you intend to be consecrated, or, no, it's the consecrated food, that has been consecrated, uh, and it's only from the kochim that you take the trauma, or the kochim has had trauma and might be taken from it. But am I? So why is this permitted that you're allowed to remove one part of trauma from the mixture? Ha kamataken. You're repairing the mixture by doing this. Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Eliezer severely. So Rabbi Yehuda concurs with Rabbi Eliezer. Damar trauma but ain't a master. He said trauma. Oh, you came on the best day, Michael. Right. It hasn't yeah. been like this for a long time. He said that trauma is actually lying separately, regarded as lying separately within the mixture. So there's no re- uh, repairing. It's none, because we learned in Mishnah, If a serve from a fill into less than 100, uh, say, a pulling, that's becoming a forbidden mixture. Right? And some of that forbidden mixture fell into another place, which was less than 100 cells pulling. Rabbi Lezor Mer, Midamaat Kitumat Vadai. The part that fell in creates a new forbidden mixture as if it were certain trauma, meaning the, the part that you put the. the, the uh, the part, just when you put the sal trauma into less than 100 parts of pulling, the entire amount becomes tummy. And when, you, and so you would think, even though you've got one, you've got one batch here of pulling and one batch here of pulling, both less than 100 parts, but together, 
that would add up to well more than 100 parts, you would think everything would be fine, but it's not, because as soon as you do it to the first bunch, the whole bunch becomes forbidden. And so when you go from this bunch, which is all forbidden now because of that tiny little bit, and you put in the next bunch, that all that, the same thing happens. The Chachamim Omrim, Ein Hamedjuma Medamea Ela Latis Heshbon, a forbidden mixture will create a forbidden mixture only according to the calculation of how much trauma it actually contains. Ah, so the sages overruled this yeah. and said, no, you've actually got way more, so you're fine. Emma Dishmatli, when did you hear Rebel Yezer talk about this? The Khumra, uh, only in regard of astringency. Lakula Mishamatle, did you hear Rebel Yezer maintain the same opinion in a leniency? Ella Hoja Maka Rabbi Shimon, rather Rebbe Yehuda concurs with Rebbe Shimon. Kedisnan, as we learned in a Mishnah, to add truma shenachlala mea. If a seir of truma fell into one hundred seir of kulin, the lohi speak of the le hagbiha ad shenachla acheret, and one did not have the opportunity to remove a seir and rectify it before another another seir of truma fell in. Harezo asura, the mixture is forbidden, based on the fact that it now has two seir of truma in it. The Rabbi Shimon Matir and Rabbi Shimon Pamit. Good old, good old Rabbi Shimon. You see the one that's always lenient? Yes. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, uh, so, on what basis that this is Rabbi Shimon's reasoning? Dilma Hatam Bahar Kamitlage. Perhaps there is an issue that they, uh, meaning the Tanakam and Rabbi Shimon, Disagree. The Tanakama Sava, the Tanakama maintains that Afal Gav the Nafu Baze Achazo Achaze, even though the two Sav Truma fell in separately, Kaman the Nafal Bevata Fadame. It's as though they fell in together. Behala Kamshin Nafla, Behala Kamshin Nafla. Thus, this Sav fell into 50, and this Sav fell into 50. So Rabbi Shimon Savar and Rabbi Shimon maintains Hamaita Batil Bemea, the first half of trauma was nullified by the one hundred of Kulin. Ah, oh, of course, that's so clever. It was nullified. And then when the second one came in, the same thing happened. The heart tip Bemea Bachar, and these can be nullified by one hundred and one self fell into the permitted. Very good. Do you get that? I'm not good on that. So you know in the, that case before I said where you put the trauma into the pull-in, yep. the whole thing becomes forbidden yep. because it's less than a hundred of pull-in. Yep. So the whole thing then goes to the next less than a hundred, but of course together they'd be less, greater, greater, than. greater than. But that next part becomes all forbidden, right? Now it's exactly the opposite case. If you have, now you definitely have one hundred. Yeah, is it definitely 100 of pull-in? And you come and put trauma in, it's nullified. You're cool. It's nullified. Why? Because now it's 100. Now it's not less than 100. Can we come across this to something else? Yeah, we came across this previously. Yeah. So now, someone brings another yes, and puts it in. That too is a Yes, because it was nullified in the first place, and now it's nullified again. Yeah. Even though the actual calculation is two parts per hundred. I didn't get that. You had your hundred. A sale went into it, and then someone else came along to the second sale, which is the same as saying one part of the fifth. Uh, which is the same as one part of the fifth. Which doesn't make a difference. It's, we know it's 
the ratio stands, right. Ela who's the Amak Rabbi Shimon ben Alazar. So Rabbi Yehuda stated in accordance with Rabbi Shimon ben Alazar. It's a tiny, it was shown a brighter. Rabbi Shimon ben Alazar on there. Not ten, ain't of the studs there. One may direct his eyes at this side. But Ochom is... I mean from the other side. What's sort of setting a blind eye? Yes. Even though you've only got a hundred parts in there, the part that had the part poured in, you can kind of go... Yeah. Yeah. We're doing this. Umma <laughs> Kavate. But does Rabbi Shimon Ben Elazar agree with Rabbi Huzza? The Ha Misli Talig Ilave, why he disputes the Rabbi Yehuda, it's a tiny because it was trying to write the Rabbi Yehuda on there. Now, Alin Eta Meduma Be Charume, we will remove. We can remove one part of Truma from a mixture with 100 parts of Kulim. Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar Amir, not in a Nabetazel, they are filled with Sadaf there. You can direct your eyes at this side of the mixture and eat from the other side without actually removing the portion. Also, he's saying you can take out. Is he saying you can take out the part that's bad? Okay. And the Rav. The Rabbi Yehuda differ with Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar. Rabbi Huda's view is even more lenient than that of Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar. Shimon ben Elazar holds that one may rectify the mixture on the Shabbat by mentally designating a portion for removal, but not by actually physically removing the portion. However, Rabbi Huda maintains that since the mixture can be rectified through mental designation, even the physical removal of a portion is permitted. Well, that's saying that the intent. Yeah. You have an intent to do it. Yeah. Very interesting. Come and touch and time. Good idea. Come Mishnah. Mishnah. Ha'evan sha'al ti hechavit. So a stone on top of a car. Normally holding down the lid, I think, isn't it? Mata al ti da feles. You can tilt the car on its side so the stone falls off. Ha'ita ben hechaviot. If it was amongst other car, car, so the so, so, yes, the story. Magbiha mata al sida vehino fele. You can lift the car to the, another area, then tilt it on its side so the stone holds up. Maot she'al hakar, money on a pillow. Mena er et hakar vehino flot. One may shake the pillow so it falls off. You can shake the pillow so it falls off. If there was built on the pillow, bird dung. Shall shell it. is something. Do either of you know what shell shell it is? I think that's kind of like a triangle. Um, Mechanica bismarchut. You can wipe it off with a rag, but you can't rinse it with water. Hatashel or, if the pillow is made of leather, not in aleha main ad shetichlech. You can pour water on it until the filth disappears. So is it saying you can't use a cloth on the leather one? Ha ha. You wash it Remember with the, the mask that you dealt with yesterday? Yeah. It says here that the rule that soaking is tantamount to washing applies only to absorbent fabric, not leather. Right. We went through this with, um, if you put oil on your foot and then into a, a leather shoe. That, that's similar, isn't it? Uh, or did we actually if you put do oil this? oil <coughs> on your foot, while your foot is on the leather Right. It wasn't allowed. Because so that's like uh, tanning. Right. You can put oil on your foot and then stick your foot in the shoe. Ah, <coughs> oh, but we also went through the laundry <coughs> process as well, didn't we? Right. Okay. Amar Rav, Hun Amar Rav. Lo Shanu Ela Beshochea. Say, Chosh. Uh, only where one forgot 
So you left the stone on top by mistake. Aval Bamania, where you left it there intentionally, probably to keep the lid down. Naser Basisla Dava Hasso. The cast became a base for a forbidden object. Oh, right, right. It mean, meaning if it was actually a lid, yeah. you could move it. Right. Um, so the stone is acting as a weight on top of the lid. Weight, convenient space to move this. Not so object. Cool. Okay. If it was among other cars, Mantana the Kol Pesa, the Ike sort of a Hik Tera. Who is the Tana that wherever there is prohibited and permitted, the Hetera Tarakinan Bisura Lo Tarakinan? One should work with the permitted object, not the prohibited one. That's a good question. Ama Raba Bar Bar meaning why wouldn't you move the forbidden ones out of the way to get to your prohibited to get to your permitted one? Why do you have to take the permitted from the pre- from within the prohibition. Ama Rabba Baba Hana, Ama Rabbi Yochanan, Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel did. So the Mishnah is based on Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel. Did Nam, Habarel Kit Mit Biyom Tov, one who separates legumes from a mixture on Yom Tov. Beit Shammai Omrim, Borer Ochel Ochel. He must select the food from the impurity and eat it. You can select in the usual way. Meaning, I suppose it doesn't really matter how you do it. You may even remove waste from the food in his lap. Because if you select using the permitted, you can't select using the something which is not permitted. Right. But Ben says you can. We will in favor of Western Uh-huh. Um, um, yes, yeah, there's a... No, no. Hillel's most occasions. There's only a few occasions where we rule like Beit Shammai. So this is one of them. Okay. Um, okay. The Cheiko of Sam Kuyei some point, uh, in his lap or with a large plate. Uh, so, according to this, it's not necessarily, Hillel says, you, you, you still have to do it in a special way, like as in you're separating one from the other, but not committed necessarily directly from the prohibited. So you can play around with both. But Tanya, Amar Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel, Bamez Varim Amarim, in what were these words said? Sheha'otha merubeh al hapkosole. When there is much, when the food is more than the impurities. Ah, so there's less effort going into taking out the impurity. Aval pasole merubeh al ha'ofel. But when the impurities are more than the food, divrei a kol barer ochel. All three, so you select the food from the impurity. But here, it's analogous to where food is more than the impurity. Okay, so there's more good stuff than bad stuff. Uh, okay. Hachanami, here as well. Kevan de Iba el Mishkal, since if one wishes to take out all the wine from the car. Lo Mishakil le Yain ad de Shakil la. The wine will not come out unless he lifts the car. Oh, this is where it's in, in between all the prohibited cars. She pasolet. 
Meruba al Ha'ofel Dame. The case is analogous to where the impurities are more than the food. So, I'm going to take out the line at the bottom and not come out of the You've got, in the other case that we just talked about, you've got food and impure food. Yeah. Uh, in which case are you allowed to take out the pure food? Where are you allowed to take out the pure food? Where the pure food is of greater, uh, the less than the impurity. Right. Now, isn't it the opposite? You've got a whole lot of barrels on the ground. Yeah. Remember, you need to tilt it. Yeah. So you can only tilt it by taking it out. Yeah. Is it exactly the same or is it different? Opposite. The impurities would be. So there's more impurities. More impurities. And you're taking out the lead. Yeah. So it's the same case. Now the mission continued. Hey, Ta, do you agree with all that, Peter? Does that yeah. sound right? This is actually this is really interesting stuff. I must say. I mean, like I can feel there's an application. Yeah, I can relate to it. If it was among other castes, one may lift the cask out. Tanya, Ushona Braisa, Rabbi Yossi Omer, If the cask was resting in the storeroom with the other ones, or Shehayu clay the Fusit Munachin Tateha, or there were glass vessels resting nearby, Prevents you from tilting. Uh, ah. the Right. Magbi halamakom acherum umata One can lift the cast to another area and tilt it on its side, so the stone falls off, which is what we read in the Mishnah. But not tell him mana, sorry, himena, masha terifos. Take from it from whatever take from it whatever you need. or machazira limkoma and return the cast to its place. Oh, and return the cast to its place. Yeah. What? Yeah. I can't believe there's no comment about that. Okay. Why would you bother? That's very odd. Ma'ot she'al hakar, money on a pillow, so you shake it so it falls off. Ah, marav chiyah barashi amarav. Lo shano ela b'shokea. They taught only where you forgot the money on the pillow. Good point. Aval b'mania, but if you did it intentionally, na'ase basis la devaz, or the pillow became a paste or forbidden object, and so it's mokta. Ah, marav b'chana, marav yotana. Loshano el la tzarath gufa, they taught only where the pillow is needed for the sake of its use. So even in a case where you want to shake it off, it's only for the purpose of actually using, using the pillow. Aval la tzarath, if you get that. Aval la tzarath mechomo, but for the sake of its place, the tzaltal of our dan alav. One may move it while money is on it. And so too, Rav Rav teacher they talk only where the pillow is for the sake of use. Aval, but where it's for the sake of its place, where you need to move for the sake of its place, Matal you can move it while the money is on it. Okay. So, in other words, don't play around with the money unless you actually need the pillow. Yeah. But if you need to sit in that place, and just lift the whole thing off. 
in a way, the, the place, in a way, has become the place of use. Money on a pillow, one may shake, the pillow so it falls off. Ama Rabbi Yashaya, Shachach Arneki Bechater, if you forgot a purse uh, in a courtyard, so the purse had money in it, and it's in a courtyard, and he wants to So they say here. They say here that uh, it's where it's unguarded. Worry about that then. Which is similar to what you were similar to what you were talking about before, where you'd be losing a valuable object. So that's the, that's the reasoning given here, and there it's because why? The judge is, uh, if one's got a money in the courtyard, but he remembers it on Shabbat, he wants to bring it into the house. Ah. Uh, Mania haleha kikar or tinok in the salsala. You can place a loaf of bread or a young child on it, and move it. And he's expanded by saying the first becomes... <coughs> Thanks for permitting us. Brilliant. Amar Rabbi Yitzchak. Shachach Levena Bechaser. Each you forgot a brick in a courtyard. Maybe you're talking about a brick of gold. No, I think they're talking about maybe a bank. Oh, then it's definitely Muslim. Oh, what kind of brick? Uh, and then maybe a bank. Be more valuable than the Maybe it's a brick that you sit on, and maybe you didn't designate it before Shabbos. Hopefully, we've got a bright or two about it. <laughs> um, Um, they forgot a pouch. So once they forgot a pouch filled with money in the public thoroughfare, so they asked Rabbi Yochanan what to do. They asked him, "Hanichu aleha kikar or tinok Okay. He waves around everything. We talk about a courtyard. This is in a public domain yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. The halakha follows all the teachings. And it's in a public domain. So the the halakha follows all these teachings. When it was forgotten. Not intentional. Ravashi Amar. Afilo shachat namilo. Even if you forgot. Um, Even if one forgot, ah, so Ravashi is actually saying, even if you've got, you can't use it. Yes, you, you can't, can't use it. Uh, right. The law amrul or They did not state um, dispensation for moving muksa by the with the loaf of bread or young child. Ella lamet vilvad, except for moving a corpse, which we learned ages ago. Yeah. Abaye Manach Kata Achipe. You know what? After all this time, I get it now. I get putting and putting a loaf of bread or a child on the course doesn't seem so odd to me anymore. It's still odd, but it's not as odd as the first time I read it. 
<laughs> it's, it's my free spirit with a hat on. I'm going to wear this out from now on. What were you suggesting? Nothing. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, Abaye Manah Kapa Akife. Bay placed a spoon on sheaves of grain. Rava Manah Sakina Abar Yona Umatalkala. Rava placed a knife on dove meat and moved it. Ama Rav Yose Kama Harifa Shmatata Zadar Zakei. Yes, guards, okay, yes. How sharp the teachings of the youngsters are. Amar de Amurabanan. When did the rabbis say that you can use this tactic? Beshocheach, where one forgets. Lechachila mi Amur. Did they say uh, that you can use this strategy at the outset? Certainly not. Bye. Okay, Amar Abaye. He loved Adam Hashuvana. If not, uh, if for the fact that I'm a distinguished person, Kapa Akife Lamali, why do I need a spoon on sheaves before meeting him? Hachazu Lamiska Alayehu. Well, you know, hello, we can sit on them and therefore they're not muksha at all. So why can't I move them without the spoon? Amar Right, that's the problem. Well, he's mixed his varieties. He's done it in a way that shows that Mark other things can see. This is an unusual thing to be done. And not just a matter of some grabbing a sheet or a bundle of whatever and carrying it when it's a Yeah. So the fact is, so what, it's Maradayim. Yes. People see you moving stuff on Shabbos and they think, and they, oh, hey, that's, that's not to do it. You're not allowed to. If you move that stuff, they don't think it's the fact that you can, can move it. Right, that's right. They don't, and they don't know what, what the intent or what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, although, in a way, the same Maradayim applies. Hey, if he can move the sheep with the spoon in it, so can I. Right. Oh, it's got a spoon on it. Ah, that must be the body. Yes, but if it removes the status, then you can move it for any purpose. Yes, because you don't want the general public to start using that. I'm a rubber. Protecting the people from their own ignorance. Whereas we... Hashem, God, God, Okay. Amar Rava. Anna. This is the point that Australian they're talking about the sheaves. So now that since the sheaves have the practical function of being used to rest upon, they can still be non mutsa but people don't realise that. So they may see the moving sheep. We read them, or we see the moving sheep. But the usage is the one not of to be utilised as a. Workday Malacha. Yeah. And they, the people seeing it, well, obviously, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, Amar Rava, Anna, Ila Adam Khashuvana, I, also, it's not for the fact that I'm a distinguished person. The kina bar yona lamali. Why do I need a knife on the dove meat? Ha hazili le unso. It's fit for me to eat while raw. Okay. And therefore it's not muksa. Um, so he did the extra stringency. Kama de hazili unso. The reason is that it was the raw meat, is that it was fit while it was raw meat. However, if it wasn't fit while raw meat, uh, if it's not fit to be eaten while raw meat, you wouldn't be allowed to move it. So that's why he did the extra stringency. Um, to say that rather concurs with Rabbi Yehuda, so does rather concur with Rabbi Yehuda? 
Samarava Lashamaye, Rava told his attendant, Tevei li bar havaza, roast the goose for me, or stay me lashunra, and throw its intestines to the cat. Moving the duck's intestines was permitted in order to feed the cat. Similarly, moving the dove should have been permitted, not because it is raw meat fit for consumption by a person, but now you can because eat it. it is suited for consumption by a dog. By a dog. Uh, oh, he chucked the intestines, yeah. which is the same as moving the raw meat. Yeah. I didn't get that. Did you get oh. that? Now I do. Um, Hatam, there, Kevan Dematra, since they were spoiled, if he left it, Jate Lave Metro, he had intended to move them the previous day. Oh, no, he had intended the previous day before Yontif uh, to use them as animal feet. So there was an intention already. Hakinami Mistabra de Rava Karadio de Svirale. It is indeed reasonable to, uh, that Rava concurs with Rabbi Yehuda, the Darash Rava, uh, for, because Rava lectured, Isha Lot Kanes Laveta Ezim, Lutor Mehem Od. A woman may not enter a woodshed to take uh, a piece of wood as to use to stir up the coals as a poker. The Od Shinishvara Sul Lahasiko Lahasiko Yonto. And a wooden poker that broke on Yonta cannot be kindled on Yonta. Lefish and Masikin Bekele, because one may fuel a fire with, with utensils on Yonta, with undamaged utensils on Yonta. The Ain Masikin Bishiri Kele, but one may not fuel a fire with fragments of utensil that broke in Yonta. Shmamina, indeed, learn from this. Okay. Yes, of course. Thank you. Bring some out. Yeah. That turns into tissue and